a good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you, the good and wonderful people of the tube. Hope you're all today, hope you're feeling grand, and always when you will. Today, people of the tube, we are looking at the legendary distortion pedal, the Boss DS1. I finally have one again. I used to have one, and then I sold it because I'm an idiot. Uh, and I love it. Just ridiculous. You know, this pedal has been around for ever and again there's so many people who have used this thing uh Kurt Cobain uh Steve Vai jo uh, Joe Johnny Gary Moore um you know the list goes on of DS1 users uh I always associate Kurt more with the DS2 personally but I know he did use the DS uh DS1 and, and again a lot of people use the DS1 I remember watching a Bob Marley gig um I forget which gig it is of his but it's, it's on YouTube and you can see the guitarist, the lead guitarist, he's got a, uh, a Les Paul Custom, a Mesa Boogie Combo, and there's only one pedal, that, on the floor, which he kicks on for solos, and it sounds amazing. And again, it is legendary. It's it's one of, uh, I don't know if it is, it's not the first distortion pedal, but it is the legendary Distortion pedal, you know, it really is. It, it really was, you know, late seventies pedal. Who would think? You know. Anyway, mind-bogglingness aside on that one, they're great pedals. They really are. Uh, this doesn't quite beat my Marshall Governor Two Plus. Uh, my Marshall Governor Two Plus, my main distortion pedal that's been my main distortion pedal for years, just is. It has something that this and every other distortion pedal doesn't have and i don't know particularly why or what that is i can just there's I, there's a feeling to the, the governor that you know nothing else has um and i just i just adore them to bits but if the governor was to kind of like you know i'm not even gonna say anything because i'm superstitious and i actually use a ds1 i wouldn't be left kind of particularly wanting if you know what i mean there is certain things this it doesn't feel the same. It's not going to feel the same. It's a different pedal altogether. But I would happily go to a gig with this and use it. And I have already. I've actually just gigged this just to try it out. And I, I really enjoyed it. Anyway. So yeah. Boss DS1, for those who don't know. Simple distortion pedal. Uh, you have three controls. You have a tone. You have a level volume. And then you have a level of distortion. And that's your lot. And it really is a simple case of plug in and play. It's a very, very easy pedal to dial in. Uh, one thing I will say is I've never, ever liked the DS1. I've, I, I, like I said, I had one years ago, and I've played through uh, others and messed around with others uh, in the meantime uh, until I got my own again. Um, I've never, ever liked the tone above 9 o'clock. As soon as it gets... A, there seems to be a weird tonal shift with this pedal. Once you get the tone above 9 o'clock, it gets into wasp territory, and I'll show you that, people, too, when we get into sound examples. But um, I don't like it at all. So I always have the tone at 9 o'clock, literally at the threshold of it being a wasp. And then it's kind of like, it's between being a wasp and too dark um, with no cut. So I always run the tone at 9 o'clock, where you heard it in the intro, Jan. Uh, I also have the level and distortion maxed out. I never turn it down. This is, um, it's a distortion pedal. I don't want to use it, and I uh, I don't really like it as a light overdrive. Again, I will play around with it when we get to the sound examples, but I don't like it as a kind of like a mid kind of drivey thing. Like I like it to be cranked to the teeth. I feel that's where it really breathes and really comes alive. It's like the DS2. I don't really like turning that thing down. And again, I never learn about my phone, do I? I never like turning the DS2 down. It's always maxed out. It's just not one of those pedals for me that I like to be. Oh my gravy, will you be quiet? It's not one of those pedals I like to be subtle with, let's put it that way. Um, you know, I, I like it to be big and heavy and in your face. And again, the DS1 does that. By the way, the DS1 and the DS2 hate each other. And I will show you what I mean by that when, when we get to the sound examples. They absolutely despise each other. They do not work well together whatsoever. One cancels the other one out. I mean... I'm pretty sure if I load the distortion, uh, they might start to like each other a bit more, but where's the fun in that? I ask you that question, people. Where is the fun in turning the game down? Anyway, what was that face? 
Uh, yeah, I think that's enough waffle. Uh, let's get into sound examples with YouTube. We're going to be using the uh, the uh, the S ST sixty two today. Um, going into the Orange Super Crush. Anything else to say? I, like I said, I will do some combinations in the vid as well. I'll like yeah, I'll show you the delay. I'll show you with the jackhammer as well, and I'll also show you these two together. Gets a bit fighty. Uh, a really cool thing is though, YouTube, I can use these two together if. I deploy the jackhammer because the jackhammer basically sits between these two even though it's technically not between them two it just looks like it the actual signal chain from the jackhammer goes to the wild pedal and then the ds2 but the jackhammer kind of sits between these two and goes all right lads calm down a bit when it's gone they're just like yeah but like this like flailing but um the jackhammer just kind of like it's kind of referees them if you will anyway i'll show you that when we get to the sound things um yeah, well, that, that's it, people Chief. So let's, let's make some noise with the legendary Boss DS1. Oh, let me tell you how it's set, like, just again, to recap. Tone, 9 o'clock, level all the way up, distortion all the way up. Um, like I say, if uh, I'll get the camera in closer anyway so you can see what I'm kind of doing. My God, I'm going to have to turn that on silent. Uh, let's make some noise. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh okay, yeah, there you go, that's the boss DS1. It Hopefully you see what I mean about the whole waspy nature of this thing. Once you get it above 9 o'clock on that tone dial, it's just horrific, in my opinion. It just gets gnarly. And, like, unless you're playing through a pillow, I don't know when you would ever need that much tone. If that makes any sense. But that's me. You know, what do I know? Um... <laughs> But I do love it. Like I say, it's okay as a low gain pedal as well. It sounds good. It does sound good. It's not really where I like to run it at all, so it feels a bit weird to me. Um, so I always like the distortion cranked. But one thing I do love people with the tube is even when the, the pedal, like the distortion's low and you've got that kind of like dirty, cleanish kind of like rock tone, the more you crank the distortion, you don't lose any of that clarity. That, that tone remains. It just gets more saturated. Sometimes with distortion pedals, when you start bumping up the gain, they get darker. Um, and you have to compensate on the tone. The DS1 doesn't do that. The tone you get at low uh, distortion levels is the same tone you get at high distortion levels. And I like that. Uh, in all fairness, I just love the way this thing sounds. Did you... Yeah, did you hear that, though? They, they really didn't like each other, did they? And I say, especially uh, when the jackhammer comes on, it's like, ah. But them two together... It's a fight. Yeah, it really is a fight, and it feels really weird, and it just pummels your speakers. Cause it's doing that weird beating thing where they just kind of work against each other. But what a pedal the DS1 is. It really is. Like, I'm so happy to have one again. Um, and yeah, God willing, touch wood, I won't be selling this one. Yeah, I, I want to keep this one because I, I really like what the DS1 is and what it does it's not the governor it's not my governor it's not the ds2 it's not the jackhammer it's not the golden plexi it's not uh the sundial or what any other distortion pedal or fuzz pedal i've got it's a ds1 you know it does the ds1 thing and i love it and again you know it's legendary for a reason you know there's a pe there's a reason that people like you know Steve Vai, Josh Trani, and, you know, Gary Moore used this thing, you know, because it was a great pedal, you know. And it, it works really nicely as well when you're smacking it into kind of like an already overdriven amp. It works if it's into a clean sound, which is what I was running mine into. You know, it, it just works. It's just one of those pedals that just works, and it's easy to get a sound that you like out of. It's easy to dial in. And it's fun, and it sounds great, you know. And, it, and it, again, it's... Like a built like a tank because boss pedals are built like tanks. Um, yeah, it's just amazing. Anyway, people, tube your thoughts on the DS1. Let me know what you reckon. Do you have one? Do you use one? Do you li do you like it? Do you love it? Do you love it? You know, I personally love it. Uh, not with the DS2. That combination can go right out the window very very fast. Uh, I do not like that sound at all. I had that problem actually with the um, boss. Uh, is it Super Overdrive? I used to have a Super Overdrive, and that, the same thing happened with that pedal as well. That did not seem to like the Super Overdrive. Again, this could just be my experiences. Don't take what I say as gospel. Go out and find these things, you know, find out what works for you yourself. Because it might work for you. It didn't for me, but that doesn't mean it won't work for you. Um, same thing with this. You know, you might actually find a way that these two actually work hand in hand and work really nicely, and you might love it. For me, that doesn't... They don't work at all. But... Again, this is only my experience, but you, go, you need to go out and kind of like, you know, um, find what works for you, so to say. Anyway, enough waffle, I think. Uh, yeah, let me know what you think, people, too. I'm so happy to have a DS1 in my life again. It's been a long time me getting another one of these things. I think I sold mine. Crikey. Um, about 2000. Six maybe 2005 I'd have sold mine. I had mine for about two. No, I can't have done because I used it in YouTube videos So that's not true. I use uh, it appears in some very early YouTube videos. So that's that's what asked what's that 20 2012 I don't really know So I must, I must have sold it around 2014 actually I'm getting mixed up Anyway, it doesn't matter about my timeline either way I sold it and I shouldn't have done that I should have kept it 
but it's okay because I have another one and I'm happy and it sounds amazing and it does what I want and I love it and it sounds great. Oh my God, Arr! getting carried away. Let me know where you reckon, PeopleTube, and I'll see you again very soon for another video. Uh, if you like the videos I do here, please consider becoming a patron at Patreon. Uh, links to that in the description box below, as well as links to me Bandcamp where you can listen to me music. And like I say, uh, oh, by the way, PeopleTube, what do you reckon to my almost boss pedal board? I'll do a video on this board at some point uh, when I get a chance to. Um, that's a bit ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. We all know that's ridiculous. And that is ridiculous as well. Uh, so is that behind there. Anyway, um, I'm loving this board. It's amazing. Uh, I'll do yeah, so I'll do a video on it or somewhere. Anyway, enough waffle. I don't know where I'm going anymore, so I'm going to get off. Goodbye now. I can't even speak anymore. Goodbye. Goodbye. My brain!